Community Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Hello, and welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I'm your guest host, Lisa Finkel. And that means it's time for another episode where we hear from Stacy with some thoughts, announcements. We certainly hope you've been enjoying some of the recent guests we've had. They've been amazing. Uh, and we hope you've been sharing the podcast with your fellow cat lovers and leaving us some reviews on iTunes. So with that, let's get started. Welcome to the show, Stacy. Lisa, thank you again for joining me. I love being a part of your virtual podcast, Colony of Cats. Uh, Stacey, one of the topics that's come up a number of times in the podcast is this persistent issue of cats versus birds. The concerns many people have over cats' natural, appropriately, inclination for predation. Sometimes the arguments between the cat people and the bird people can get pretty heated. But you have a different view. So I thought I'd first ask you, why do you think bird lovers and cat lovers can get along? Yeah, I find it very interesting that people do feel like we have to take sides on this issue, that we have cat people on one side and bird people on another. I've I've honestly never looked at it that way. I feel that we are all out there in the same community and we need to treat all animals with great respect. And I understand that there are concerns about cats killing birds. They do that. They don't do it to a great level, but they do naturally prey. Hunting is part of their, I guess, of their DNA. But one thing that the community cat folks, as well as the bird lovers, really want is to ensure that any cat that can have a home does have a home. And so we really have the same mission in place. We have a mission that our free roaming cat populations are reduced and that they are reduced in such a way that they're not going to flare up and increase over time. So we want to have a uh, sustainable model of keeping our cats in homes. And yes, we have community cats. We have feral cats that are trapped, neutered, returned. But if we can do some very aggressive, proactive programs, we may not have many cats. And you know, we get to sort of population zero is what I would call it in Newburyport, where we have very, very few owned free roaming cats in the downtown area of Newburyport, where when we first started, you know, we had 300 plus cats. So obviously, our objectives are very much in line with the objectives of, of the birders or the bird lovers. Many of our volunteers are what we call plover wardens at the refuge in Newburyport. We have a very large Audubon center in Newburyport. Honestly, we haven't had that many conflicts with the birding community because our objectives were so clearly stated that we wanted to strive to have really you know, no more homeless cats. I see where you're coming from here. And as a matter of fact, I think that many people who love cats love all nature. They love cats and dogs and maybe even the squirrels in their yard, um, as well as birds. And so I agree with you that there doesn't need to be, you know, a very straight line down the two sides. So if you support community cats, it doesn't mean you support having as many as possible. It means you support the reduction of those numbers of cats in a humane way. So let's just go through what those methods would be. So, of course, aggressive spay neuter is the number one method. And we've known that to be extremely effective of having affordable or free spay neuter available for owned cats as well as for free roaming cats. So that is your first whack. And I guess I would call that the going after the low-hanging fruit. So you develop your spay-neuter clinic or your programs, and you just get out there. And any cat with three or four legs or, you know, with the ability and a tail and, you know, comes in a carrier or a trap, you know, you're going to spay or neuter it and not even ask a lot of questions. So I would say that's definitely your, your first level of tacking the overpopulation problem. But then I think we then need to move and take it into a next step. If we truly, truly are striving towards a zero pop, zero overpopulation mode, we need to also strive to 100% sterilization mode. So the clinic model doesn't dive deep enough 
to that managed colony level. And then we also need to really focus on encouraging our communities to create managed feral cat colony programs, managed free roaming cat colony programs. You can phrase it however you want to, but it means diving down, getting deep in the community, really getting to know the cats and ensuring that all free roaming cats are sterilized. You're not going to get to a zero population level at 80% sterilization, 60% sterilization. You're not even going to break even at 60% sterilization. You're still probably going to have your population grow at that rate. So you really need to focus on getting up there and getting to that 100% level, which is really tough for a lot of organizations because they tend to try and spread themselves thin. They kind of go where the where the in a most reactive way, and that may not really help solve the situation. We also need to educate or partner with the local folks in the local community so that they can be our neighborhood watchers and also learn to trap on their own. I mean, my dream world is that trapping free roaming cats is just what happens. Trapping them, getting them spayed and neutered, evaluating whether they're abandoned or they're community owned. That's what happens. It's no questions asked. So that's what we need to get to in order to be able to get in alignment with the desires of all of us, which is, you know, ensuring that every cat has their needs taken care of. It it sounds like a daunting task, uh, but when you think about how far we've come in 25 years from a time when people let their cats outdoors, they didn't spay neuter, not because they didn't have the money, but they didn't understand why they should do it. And where you look at where we are today, we've made a ton of progress. So it it really is possible. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we have. We've come a long, long way. And I, but I would also say I think that not in all communities, certainly, but many, many communities, we are focused on that low-hanging fruit still. And I think that there are parts of the country now that are looking at that their shelters are still getting in feral kittens. And they're kind of asking, well, why, why are we still getting feral kittens in if we've been doing thousands and thousands and thousands of spay neuter surgeries? And I'm like, well, it's because you, you're not diving deep into that colony management model. And that takes a lot of time. I mean, to have a a TNR coordinator or to do some data collection, that does take time. I'm hoping that there will be some software available within the next four to six months that will help with tracking that colony management. And therefore, it'll be less challenging to be able to monitor a colony, to be able to find out when a new cat's come into that colony using software to have multiple sources be able to ping in and say, hey, I'm seeing somebody new here. That person may be the caretaker, not necessarily the person who's like a designated trapper, but yet there's a way for these folks to all communicate in a sort of structured way and be able to address that cat, which I would label that cat Adam as the abandoned cat Adam, and you'll be able to assist Adam before Adam can get into any trouble with Eve. And now, let's take a moment to listen to a few words from our sponsors. No Regrets is a fast-paced card game. Your goal? Get tattoos and give bad advice. Your friend needs I Love Tacos on his arm, right? With gorgeous graphics and reviews like fun, engaging, and enough, take that to be competitive but not a jerk. And some of the best art I've ever seen in gaming. It's perfect for game night. Want to play? Back us on Kickstarter. Get the game, art, or be a bad advice backer and give the creator something to regret. Pony up and he'll get a tattoo of whatever you choose. Go to poisonfishgames.com slash kickstarter to back no regrets, the game of art and poor life choices, or email dave at poisonfishgames.com for details. Community Cats podcast founder Stacy LeBaron doesn't just talk the talk, she walks the walk. Stacy is available to provide customized consulting for your group to help you increase your effectiveness and develop an action plan for improving the lives of cats in your community. Working with you, Stacy will develop a consulting plan that meets your needs, including visioning workshops for your staff, board, or volunteers. For more information, you can contact Stacy directly. Email Stacy at communitycatspodcast.com or visit our website and click on the education menu. Let's join forces to make the world a better place for community cats. You bring up a very interesting point that new cat 
let's talk about cat abandonment and how we might fight that. Big question. It's an area where I think we need to really start putting a lot of time and effort and thought into it. And I know that several people have. Um, Dr. Emily Weiss has done a lot of research in this area and is really focused in on it. But that's really our source. Why do we have this problem of too many cats in our in our communities. It's got to start somewhere and it starts with a couple of people leaving cats behind and we need to really be able to prevent that from happening, providing the resources at the source to be able to ensure that those cats aren't being abandoned. I mean, ideally in my dream world, and this is also a reactive response, which I feel is kind of unfortunate, is if they do get abandoned, I want to ensure that they're already spayed and neutered before they get abandoned. But ideally, we don't want them to be abandoned. Why do people feel it's okay to do that? What is in the mindset for that? And I have a feeling, I truly believe people don't think it's okay to abandon their cats. I just feel like they're pushed up against the wall. They've got lots of pressures, financial, social, families breaking apart. I think a big part of it is financial, but maybe, you know, maybe I'm not right on that landlord pressures potentially. Just a sense of overwhelmingness. I mean, as you get poor, the number of cats you have go up. I can't imagine anything more stressful than having six cats on a ten or twenty thousand dollar a year income and having a sick cat or not being able to care for cats, not being able to pay my rent and getting, you know, in between with dealing with my cats versus and then my kids and then, you know, and I mean I can just I feel the stress building up just having this conversation. And so you just hit this panic mode and then you have to triage out. And sometimes when you triage out, you don't make the best decisions. So, you know, that comes full circle to something we've heard so often on your podcast, which is it's not just about cats, it's about people and finding a way to meet the needs of people who want to most likely do the right thing. I really feel that it's important that we get the cat assistance message out into all social service areas. And I know that those programs are stretched thin, they're overwhelmed, but yet just to add to their toolkit, what can be done to help community cats? It can help actually create and build a great relationship between someone from social services and a client because they are able to provide some practical guidance and assistance. Well, I know this is a topic we will uh, continue to hear about as you have future guests on the podcast, but I know you have a number of announcements and updates to share with our listeners, so the mic is yours, Stacey. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. This is our 80th episode that we are recording today, so over the course of the last four months, we've been doing quite a lot. In many podcasts, they run the shows run weekly, and we're a five-day-a-week podcast show, so When we hit 52, my team was pretty excited. We're like, we've done as many shows as many podcasts do in a year. So that was pretty exciting news to us. And I want to thank all of the listeners out there that take the time to listen to the podcast and hear what these fantastic guests have to say. It's really been incredibly educational for me and I hope for everybody else. Keep those comments coming in and keep the reviews coming in um, for iTunes. Really, really appreciate it. And I just want to encourage everybody to keep sharing with their friends, colleagues, staff members, share the link with the show and subscribe to iTunes and we'll continue to build up our community. As we look ahead, we're closing in on National Feral Cat Day, which is on October 16th. And I hope everybody's doing something fun and special that day for community cats as well as for themselves. And um, we're planning to have a special show. It's on a Sunday, I believe, this year. So we're planning to run a special show for National Feral Cat Day. So keep an eye and an ear out for that with our announcements on the Facebook page. Uh, And if you aren't a friend on Facebook, please do sign up. We have some great video of various meetings that we've run in the Boston area about different topics like foster home coordination and management as well as uh, developing a community cat education program. So there are some really fun videos up on the Facebook page uh, to check out. 
And we are entering into holiday shopping season. So I don't know, Lisa, if you're a big holiday shopper, but we have a Zazzle site on our website. Please check out our store tab. Do some shopping for the holidays. The funds raised from those Zazzle sales will help support the cost of the show, and then any extra funds will go to help support our Community Cats Grants program. So I also wanted to share with everybody that the response for the Community Cats Grants program has been phenomenal. We have already over 40 applicants for the program, so it's been great. And I want to thank everybody who has sent applications in or has shared the link with others. It's truly a great way to be able to fully leverage the small grassroots organizations and help them grow their fundraising efforts. And I unfortunately do have to say that In many cases, money does make the world go round, and it also makes the opportunities more apparent. And so the more money we can raise to assist with spay and neuter of our colony cats, that is that first wave, that first necessary wave. So it's really important. And I want to thank everybody for the response on that and keep those applications coming in. And we'll keep you updated on the progress of how that goes and share with you some of the stories that the groups have. And my second to last comment or question too is or sharing with the group is I would like to ask folks if you do have any guest ideas or any just general ideas about the show, please reach out to me at stacy at communitycatspodcast.com. And I would love to hear from you all. Tell me what you think is working, what is not working, what would be helpful, what would not be helpful. This is a brand new project, so I am open to any and all suggestions. Just keep that in mind. And if you have any ideas about guests that you'd like to see on the show, just send me an email or you can give folks my email address and I'd be happy to chat with anyone. I want to learn what's going on with community cats all around the United States as well as internationally. I'm lucky to start getting involved with some of the groups on an international level, so I think we're going to start hearing from folks around the world. And then my last question to the Community Cats podcast community, it sounds like I'm handing out lots of homework assignments for everybody today. I am toying with the idea of starting a Community Cats book club, and if you do think that that would be a good idea, please let me know. I will also post that question up on our Facebook page, And I'm just wondering if our listeners would be interested in having sort of a book club series focused on books around community cats. Again, I just want to thank everybody for all that you're doing to help support the show. The show is for you, to help you, want to help you improve your abilities to help community cats. If I can help you in any way through crafting a visioning workshop or just doing some one-on-one consulting. I'd be happy to do that, so you can feel free to reach out to me on that. If you do own a business that's interested in supporting the show, we also have sponsorship opportunities where you could be a sponsor, and they're very, very affordable opportunities. So we would definitely be interested in having more sponsors for the show, too. So I think we're closing it here on time, but I want to thank everybody again, especially my team of Kristen, Jamie, Lisa, Anna and Julie, we have a pretty good sized team working to make this podcast happen and it would not happen without all of their efforts. Just a shout out to my crew that uh, we've gotten to the 80th episode and I'm looking forward to the 100th episode and we'll have to do something really fun for that one. We absolutely will. But in the meantime, I need to go to the Zazzle store and start looking for gift ideas. Uh, So with that, Stacey, thank you for all you do for cats. I said it before, I feel privileged to have been able to meet you through my uh, joining of the board of the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. And uh, every community in the country deserves a cat advocate like you. And the fact that you're sharing your knowledge and what you've done is is pretty inspirational to me. Well, and Lisa, it's always a pleasure to work with you. Same here. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you for listening to the Community Cats podcast. I would really appreciate it if you would go to iTunes and leave a review of the show. It will help spread the word to help more community cats. 